Hello everybody, this is Hobo, your favorite starving gamer, here to continue playing through Antstream Arcade's library of 1300 retro video games. Today is day 13. And up today we have uh, Alien Breed Tower Assault, which is the third Alien Breed game. Uh, the Spectrum version of Anarchy to compare with the Commodore 64 version we played earlier. Uh, Ship of Doom, a text-based adventure on the Spectrum, and Astro Chase, a uh, shooter of sorts for the Commodore 64, a space shooter, shoot them up. Um, so Tower Assault, again, the third Alien Breed game, uh, published a year after Alien Breed 2 in 1994 by Team 17 for the Amiga. I don't know if they had a difficulty setting on the uh, other one, just normal and tough. That's interesting. I guess that's to skip to the levels. Crash landing site as you scramble from the remains of the Predator dropship, you find yourself at the southern border of the colony grounds outside MRU 9B. Perform a brief wreck and proceed into the colony complex by one of the available entrances. Caution areas mine. Let the assault begin. Nash is dead. You're on your way. Smart card message follows. Officer Nash didn't make it. It looks like you're out there on your own. Unfortunately, none of his equipment survived the impact either. The storage facility would be a good place to look if only, if only you had a map. So just hit the uh, left trigger and it actually makes it so you walk backwards so you can fire. That's pretty cool. I don't know if that was in the other two games. Well, this isn't as bad as the first one, or the second one with the helicopters. Alright, so I guess there's no Xenomorph yet. Area scan, it seems the complex is built up of six minor towers and one large central tower. Access to the nearest tower is due north and paths through the minefield lie due east and west. There seem to be little activity except the security lasers. Area scan. Okay. Well, this is kind of a slow start. Outdoor Sector 2, you are currently east of the civilian tower. A tower looms in the east, and a path southeast leads to Sector 3. Security lasers are still active and are hostile. Okay, so I'm still wandering around. Underground tunnels, quick travel over long distance. Okay. 
Well, I'm going to cut here until I find a little more action. Well, that didn't take too long to find some action, so... I'll just continue from here. Okay, actually, if you hold down fire, it'll keep firing while you move backwards. What the hell? Is that a turret? Jeez. Smart card message followed. Man, this is pretty gruesome. Yeah, the combat feels better. Even better than the second one. Definitely better than the first one. to back up and fire is nice. That might have been in the first and second one. I don't know for sure. Yeah, I think this is uh, pretty good. Not such a painful start like the second one. Uh, combat feels a lot better than the first and the second one. There's a lot more reading to do. Looks like more exploring and different area changes instead of just one big area like in the first one. But yeah, it's probably enough of that. Yeah, I'll give that like a 6 out of 10, maybe a 7. I think that might be the one I actually play, uh, you know, in the near future. So I'll add that to my favorites. Okay. Up next, we have Anarchy for the Spectrum, but let's pull up Anarchy for the Commodore 64 that we played earlier. It's a puzzle shooter hybrid. Uh, one of the hidden gems, one of the favorite games on here I've found that I wasn't aware of previously. And you just shoot these uh, brown solid colored blocks. You have two minutes to shoot them all. Um, and then exit the level, these moving things will kill you one shot. Uh, you can turn them into blocks temporarily, but yeah, really good game. I've played it quite a few times since my initial play. All right. So let's look at the spectrum version. So this is an 87 game from Houston Consultants. Looks like controls are the same. And graphics are considerably different, obviously not as good on the spectrum. Less powerful. Hardware. Sound effects are different. Like in the uh, Commodore 64 version, your bullets don't make noise when you fire, but the blocks do when you destroy them. be fast. But yeah, it's a fun little game. I really like it. You 
controls might even feel a little more precise than in the Commodore 64 version. There we go. And that's it. Oh man, that's hard to see. All right. Well, that is enough, I think. Uh, to see the difference between the two versions, Spectrum and Commodore 64. Again, I think it's a really great game. Um, give it like an 8 out of 10, like I did on the Commodore 64. You know, if I'm going to play it, I am going to play it on the Commodore 64. All right. Up next, we have Ship of Doom. Bet your sea Ship of Doom. Uh, released in 82 for the Spectrum. Discover the adventure series where each chapter explores a new strange world. Adventure C starts with the spacecraft being pulled in by a slaver starship. Okay. Looks like all you can do is bring up the virtual keyboard. Okay. You're in a spacecraft in Exodus South. I can also see an escape button. Tell me what to do. Press escape button. Escape button is useless as gravitation beam still holding. Tell me what to do. Turn off beam. I can't. Look around. Nothing special. Okay. Go south. You're in an alien airlock. There's a large round handle and Exodus North. Tell me what to do. My handle. I can't. Okay. Use handle. And then look around. Look around see nothing special okay there's only one exit back to where we were maybe i can push the handle that doesn't make sense okay well anyway standard text-based adventure you can't really rate that without playing it to see if the story is any good so good that you can actually use your computer's keyboard not just the virtual keyboard so that does make a text-based adventure playable on this platform okay and then last game is going to be astro chase now, the instructions are pretty in-depth so um, i'll spare you reading all those but essentially there's mines coming towards earth and there's ships defending those mines, and you have to kill the mines before they hit Earth. Um, and you just move with momentum. You just push the direction you want to go. Oops. <laughs> Epic music. Okay, there's a mine. Oops. Man, these controls are rough. That was pretty dramatic. These controls are crazy. Now oh, that's a mine, I think. Ow. What am I hitting? 
Oh yeah, there's a force field on the edge of the uh, area. You can't go through it. Oh, there's a mine getting close. Okay, we got a mine. Man, this is really difficult. And the earth is destroyed again. Okay, well, I think that's enough to see what it's about. Alright, so that was Astro Chase, a game for the Commodore 64, released in 1984 by First Star Software. Um, really difficult. I don't think I will be playing that again. The con I just don't like games with terrible controls. Even though I think that's kind of intentional, the whole momentum thing in space. It just uh, doesn't feel very good. So I'll give that like a three. Probably wouldn't play that again. So that's going to be our four games for today. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please leave me a like, subscribe to the channel, and have a good day.